31. The Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community Presents The Mini Biography of Rudolf Giuliani Born 1944 Lawyer Rudolf Giuliani was elected mayor of New York City in 1993, remaining in office for two terms. He is currently Donald Trump's lawyer. Who is Rudolf Giuliani? Rudolf Giuliani, born upon May 28, 1944, in Brooklyn, New York, worked as a personal attorney and with the U.S. Department of Justice. He later won the New York City mayoral race as the Republican candidate in 1993. He stayed in workplace for two terms, taking a hard view on criminal offense while becoming a divisive figure due to the fact that of his handling of cops abuses and racial concerns in cases. He later unsuccessfully campaigned for his party's presidential nomination in 2008. Giuliani was likewise recognized for his focused leadership in the aftereffects of the terrorist attacks that felled the World Trade Center in New York City on September 11, 2001. He later on began his own security consulting firm and worked with Donald Trump throughout the 2016 governmental campaign, before signing up with the president's legal team. Background Former mayor of New York City Rudolph William Louis Giuliani was born on May 28, 1944, in Brooklyn, New York, into a large Italian-American household that consisted primarily of police officers and firemen. I grew up with uniforms all around me and their stories of heroism, Giuliani remembers. His mom, Helen Giuliani, was a clever and severe lady who worked as a secretary, and his dad, Harold Giuliani, ran a tavern and worked for a bros mob connected loan sharking organization. Although Giuliani just discovered the complete story as an adult, his dad had been jailed in 1934 for robbing a milkman at gunpoint and had invested a year and a half in prison. I knew he had entered problem as a young man, but I never understood precisely what it was, Giuliani remembered. Nevertheless, Harold Giuliani was an exceptional father who was figured out not to enable his son to duplicate his mistakes. When Rudy Giuliani was seven years old, his dad moved the family from Brooklyn out to Long Island to distance his kid from the mob-connected family members, and he instilled in him a deep respect for authority, order and personal property. My dad compensated through me, Rudy Giuliani later stated. In an extremely exaggerated way, he made sure that I didn't duplicate his mistakes in my life which I thank him for, because it worked out. Giuliani went to Bishop Laughlin Memorial High School, where he was only a good trainee but an active individual and leader in student politics. Upon graduating in 1961, he continued to Manhattan College in the Bronx, graduating in 1965. Motivated by his dad's consistent lecturing on the value of order and authority in society, Giuliani dealt with to end up being a lawyer and went to New York University Law School. At NYU, Giuliani truly excelled as a trainee for the first time, graduating magna cum laude in 1968 and landing a prestigious clerkship with Judge Lloyd McMahon, a United States District Court judge for the Southern District of New York. At Judge McMahon's motivation, Giuliani then transferred to Washington, D.C. to work for the U.S. Attorney's Office. He got his very first huge promotion in 1973, at the age of 29, when he was selected the lawyer in charge of the police corruption cases resulting from the high-profile Knapp Commission. Early Political Career In 1977, Giuliani left the U.S. Attorney's Office to spend four years in private practice with the firm Patterson, Belknap, Webb and Tyler in New York. Then, in 1981, he returned to Washington to act as President Ronald Reagan's Associate Attorney General, the number three position in the Justice Department. Two years later on, in 1983 Giuliani was appointed U.S. lawyer for the Southern District of New York and began his lifelong fight versus the endemic issues of drugs, violence and arranged criminal offense in New York City. During his six years as U.S. Attorney, Giuliani worked tirelessly to jail drug dealerships, prosecute white-collar lawbreakers and interrupt organized crime and government corruption. Giuliani's 4,152 convictions, versus just 25 turnarounds, identify him as one of the most efficient U.S. attorneys in American history. It was also as a U.S. lawyer that Giuliani began to develop his track record as something of a publicity applicant, in some cases openly handcuffing mob bosses and magnate on trumped-up charges only to silently drop the charges later. New York City Mayor in 1989, Giuliani ran for mayor of New York City as a Republican versus Democrat David Dinkins. He lost by a razor-thin margin in among the closest mayoral elections in New York City history, and Dinkins ended up being the city's first black mayor. Four years later, in 1993, Giuliani once again challenged Dinkins. With more than one million New Yorkers on well-being, criminal offense rates increasing and an ever-worsening fracture drug epidemic pestering communities, the mild-mannered Dinkins had fallen out of favor and a tough-on-crime prosecutor appeared to lots of to be exactly what the city required. 
Giuliani won the election and took workplace as New York City's 107th mayor on January 1, 1994. Comparing himself to Winston Churchill leading London through the Blitz of 1940, Giuliani set out to deal with New York's problems with a single-mindedness that verged on ruthlessness. In his very first two years in workplace, his policies helped reduce severe crime by one-third and cut the city's murder rate in half. Authority shootings fell by 40% and occurrences of violence in city prisons, as soon as an apparently insurmountable issue, essentially disappeared by the end of his first term, stopping by 95%. Giuliani's highly successful welfare-to-work effort helped more than 600,000 New Yorkers land work and attain self-sufficiency. Possibly inevitably for a mayor so identified to basically change the method city politics operated, Giuliani earned almost as many enemies as admirers. Minority leaders at Borden for his widespread reliance on racial profiling in law enforcement and liberals slammed his failure to reform the city's struggling public school system. Civility campaigns versus jaywalking, street vendors and public funding of controversial art likewise provoked public ire, and Giuliani even gathered news over his danger to force the United Nations from the city due to unpaid parking tickets. In 1997 he was detected with prostate cancer, the illness that had actually eliminated his daddy, and started undergoing treatments that sapped him of his usual vitality. Although he won re-election by a landslide that exact same year, by 2000 as his second term was nearing its end Giuliani's popularity had actually fallen off radically partially due to what was viewed as the racialized handling of criminal activity by authorities, which included stop and frisk tactics. A number of prominent cases came to the fore throughout this time. In August 1997, Haitian immigrant Abner Luimo was beaten and brutally tortured by a group of policemen at the 70th Precinct in Brooklyn. Then in 1999, the weaponless Amadou Diallo was shot at dozens of times and eliminated by authorities beyond his door while attempting to reach his wallet. Another unarmed guy, Patrick Dorisman, was killed by police outside of a bar in 2000. September 11 attacks. Giuliani was suddenly thrust into the global spotlight by a disaster that stunned the world and concerns specify his public profession. On September 11, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked two commercial traveler airliners and crashed them into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. Both towers collapsed within hours and 2,752 individuals died from the attacks. Giuliani's management throughout the city's moment of crisis motivated numerous. Arriving on the scene within minutes of the second plane crash, Giuliani coordinated rescue operations that saved as lots of his 20,000 lives and emerged as the nationwide voice of reassurance and alleviation. Tomorrow New York is going to be here, a somber however fixed Giuliani revealed to the city, the nation and the world. And we're going to restore, and we're going to be more powerful than we were prior to. I desire the people of New York to be an example to the rest of the country, and the rest of the world, that terrorism can't stop us. Yet years after his time as mayor was over, Giuliani dealt with criticism over worker security throughout the months invested at the site of the 9-11 attack otherwise dubbed Ground Zero. Countless recovery workers have dealt with long-term health problems connected to the cleanup of Ground Zero, with reports that the managerial focus was on efficiency and finishing tasks rapidly as opposed to following federal safety protocols. More than 10,000 workers ultimately sued the city, leading to a 2010 group settlement that totaled more than $600 million. Politics and Business Ties Due in large part to his leadership in the after-effects of the terrorist attacks of September 11, Rudy Giuliani will forever be called one of the most renowned mayors in the history of New York City. He left workplace on December 31, 2001 and was changed by Michael Bloomberg, whose election was all however secured the moment he received Giuliani's endorsement. The previous mayor began business firm Giuliani Partners in 2002 and saw the enterprise become a multi-million affair with global connections. Yet the firm likewise invoked analysis and criticism for less than savory transactions, consisting of security-slash-police training and real estate offers for Qatar, an oil-rich Middle Eastern nation thought to have ties to terrorist movements. Giuliani Partners likewise ended up being associated with the pharmaceutical market, with Purdue Pharma, a business that paid $2 million in DEA fines for misguiding the general public around opioid dependencies, working as a significant customer. In 2008, he ran for the Republican governmental election and became an early frontrunner, but his campaign failed to produce much momentum, and he left after finishing a remote third in the Florida primary. Throughout the 2012 presidential election, Giuliani endorsed Republican candidate Mitt Romney. Trump ally and lawyer. Giuliani later on ended up being a singing and sometimes vitriolic representative for Truth Program host and organization executive Donald Trump during his successful 2016 presidential campaign. 
After the election, the Trump follower was thought to be in the running for a cabinet position, though scrutiny occurred over the former mayor's paid speeches and his business's company ties. Giuliani did not land a position in the Trump administration, but he did sign up with the president's legal group in April 2018, amid the near-year-long special counsel investigation into Russian interference. With Trump's individual lawyer, Michael Cohen, under a concurrent examination and the group requiring a recharge, Giuliani brought a familiarity with unique counsel Robert Mueller and the desire to speed up an investigation that requires a little push. That day, his law practice, Greenberg Traurig, revealed that Giuliani would be taking leave, and on May 10, Giuliani resigned from the firm to totally concentrate on his task for Trump. Giuliani immediately sent the media into a tizzy when he stated that Trump was aware of Cohen's alleged hush payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels, contrary to the denials being issued by the White House. He followed with other remarks that caused lots of head-scratching, including his unfounded statement that Mueller would end his investigation on September 1 and his persistence that the president had broad powers that enabled him to both end the special counsel examination and potentially pardon himself of any misdeed. Throughout a July 2018 speech to a yearly event of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, Giuliani addressed the beginning of Iranian protests and the Trump administration's desire to see a routine change. Just a few months back, the President of the United States about whom there's a great deal of controversy, about whether he should tweet or not got his little phone and he tweeted, and he supported the protesters, like Ronald Reagan did for the protesters in Poland when Solidarity marched against communism, he stated. And what took place there? Communism fell. Poland is free. The Iron Curtain evaporated. And the Berlin Wall was chopped down. That will take place now. Involvement in Ukraine. In September 2019, House Democrats introduced a probe into whether Trump and Giuliani tried to press the Ukrainian government into investigating Hunter Biden, the kid of 2020 governmental candidate Joe Biden. Giuliani admitted to going over the matter with Ukrainian officials, however stated he did so at the demand of the U.S. State Department. The plot thickened the following month when two partners of Giuliani's, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, were arrested for breaking project financing laws. It was reported that the two business owners were associated with efforts to find information that would stymie the Mueller examination in Ukraine, as well as that which would show harmful to Biden's presidential campaign. Personal life Giuliani has actually been married three times. He inadvertently wed his second cousin, Regina Perugi, in 1968, prior to they received an annulment in 1982. That very same year, he wed television personality Donna Hanover. Hanover and Giuliani became estranged while he was working as mayor, and Giuliani vacated the mayor's house at Gracie Mansion, where Hanover and his kids stayed, to live instead in an apartment or condo owned by two of his pals. Hanover learned that her spouse was planning to leave her during a Giuliani television press conference. While still mayor and still wed to Hanover, Giuliani began a relationship with a woman called Judith Nathan, who played a progressively crucial and public function in his life during the catastrophes of his prostate cancer and the September 11th attacks. Giuliani and Hanover officially separated in 2002, and Giuliani wed Nathan in 2003. In April 2018, Judith declared divorce after 15 years of marital relationship. It is with excellent unhappiness I can confirm that Judith and I are divorcing. We hope to do this as amicably as possible, and hope that people will respect the privacy of our children at this time, Giuliani said. Although reports recommended that the procedures were anything however friendly, the two sides reached a confidential resolution in December 2019.